Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Stay tuned to find out how they can keep your online identity safe when traveling. These poor unfortunate costumes, so sad, so true. You come flocking to my channel, screaming, Distories, Daniel, please, and do I help you? Yes, I do. <laughs> Ursula truly is one of the most terrifying Disney animated villains. Think about it. You can punch a Jafar, right? You can tranquilize a, uh, <laughs> you can tranquilize a Scar or the hyenas, but if an Ursula comes out of you, if a giant squid with a, with a magical shell, with a beautiful singing voice coming at it, takes you out under the water, you have, you, there's nothing you can do. You're done. You've got two legs. She's got eight. Everything about Ursula just is not, it's not good. It's not good. She's a sea witch, okay? And you know what? In the theme parks, I don't have good news for you because every version of Ursula seemed to be an exercise in just how bad could it get. So buckle in, folks, because we're about to go uh, under the sea. Down where it's wetter is not always where it's better. Take it from me. Let's go. Look, you all tuned into the evolution of Ariel. I know you have. So you remember in 1988, right when the movie dropped, we got the characters in the park almost like ASAP, or as the kids say, ASAP. There was a float, it accompanied the, the, the character. It was just a character parade that they just slapped this VHS box set parade float on the back of. And you know what? I'm here for it, I'm living for it. And at the back of the float is Ursula, the first Ursula that we see as a costume character. Now, she's on the float. She's just got flappy danglies, you know, her, her tentacles. Speaking of which, and this is an important thing to pay attention to, in the movie she only has six legs, which would make her a squid unless you count her hands and her armies, then she's got eight. Uh, and we uh, don't adhere to that at all during this evolution, so don't worry. <laughs> Sometimes she's got eight, sometimes she's got six, sometimes she's got 12. It just all depends on what the costume needs and how interpretive and how literal or how conceptual we're making Ursula. Honestly though, for the time in the late 80s, early 90s, this was a decent translation of the character. Her hair is just a basic kind of uh, a stylized wig. She's got the very black, simple tentacles. It's a, it's a classic Ursula look and uh, they did a pretty good job with it right off the bat. Then night fell in 1991 and Spectro Magic took to the streets and we got a uh, incredible Ursula mini float. This is one of those floats you see in those nighttime parades, daytime parades that just seemingly just Roombas around on the streets, right? She's got these eight tentacles that are wrapped around in very clever ways. So as this character is spinning around in the streets, it almost looks like her tentacles have some life to them in the way that they disappear and reappear behind her silhouette. The costume is cool unless you have flash. If you use flash photography on this costume, oh boy, you're gonna have uh, some spooky dreams because this Ursula is uh, wild when you have a flashlight on it. When they say don't use flash photography, this is why, this is why. The costume's all lit up and it's beautiful. The seashell glows, the costume glows, and then the bodice has this black light kind of uh, piece in it that allows the Ursula face to light up. Pay attention to this spectral magic head. She'll be returning. In 1992, Fantasmic had a lot of hopes and dreams that they wished to achieve. Uh, and one of them was this fully articulated Ursula inflatable balloon. She was a little bit of a wacky inflatable arm filling tube man in that she just was always just doing this because they couldn't really keep her, they couldn't really keep, it just didn't work. It didn't work. It just did not work. It just didn't work. Hey, she deflated all too often. Uh, we'd later try to float some and jet some jet skis, but you know what happens when we try to put jet skis in the parks. Dramatic pause for Kite Tales footage. This float didn't really last long and it wasn't long before she was just translated right into those big water screens. But for a time we had a big inflatable Ursula that was spooky. All right, it's spooky. I can't look at it too. These poor unfortunate souls in pain, in need. What is this fiddler on the roof? Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN, a virtual private network, keeps your online identity safe by encrypting all of your information sent between your device and the internet. This keeps your personal data safe from big companies or cyber criminals or sea witches. 
Kenny, what, <laughs> what did you do to me? Why am I on vacation suddenly in the middle of this video? A VPN swaps your real location with a virtual one, AKA changing your IP address. This way you can virtually travel the globe from anywhere in the world. When hitting up all those international parks, it is so useful to be able to trick your devices into thinking that they're still home. Bypass censorship everywhere. Surfshark liberates your internet. That way certain apps and sites like YouTube will always be available for me when I'm exploring all the Disney parks around the world. Sure, theme park internet is free, but it's just about as secure as a Prince Eric statue strapped to a boat sailing the seas of France, all right? Just a few waves and that thing knocks right off. Surfshark's like, it's it's like sunscreen, all right? You gotta, you gotta be fully, you gotta be fully uh, prepared when you're going out there. There's dangers everywhere, all right? Use my code DisneyDan at surfshark.deal slash DisneyDan to get 83% off plus three extra months for free. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee so there's no risk to try it out. Hit that link in the description below. The 1992 MGM Studios live show, which I am so glad is gone because honey, it was tired. The Ursulas in this show are hilarious, mostly because the costume is so large that the uh, arms can't be puppeteered by the same person. So regularly, uh, you have one cast member over here with this arm, another cast member over here in this arm, and there's usually chaos. There's usually, <laughs> they both have minds of their own. Each one's doing its own thing most of the time, which is kind of funny. Uh, the tentacles are fun. Uh, they kind of jut up from the from the foggy fog of the stage, and they're all kind of a little bit articulate. They do like the, the spinny winnies. The head sculpt on this thing is terrifying. This is an absolute unit of an Ursula, all right? She is big and bulky and just like Job of the Hutt, you know what I mean? This is a huge puppet that's rolled out on stage every night. It's it's great. Later, they they revamp it a little bit better, a little bit more, a lot more detailing in the face, but at that point in the 2000s when they revamped the show, we were so much better at sculpting heads. And so of course, let's just throw a new head on that Ursula and then we toned down her body. She didn't have nearly as much of the pudge that she had in the original costume. In Paris, in 1995, they were so jealous of how cool Disneyland was. They're like, we need a Fantalusion. Uh, sorry, we need a Fantalusion. We need our own a Fantasmic. And they're like, we don't have a body of water for that, bro. We wasted a lot on the square trees. We don't have the budget. So what they did was a parade instead. They distilled the phantasmic energy down into a parade. Now this is still when Ursula was a primary villain as this big inflatable thing that was floating around in the lake. So inflatables were just the name of the game for this parade where Jafar, uh, Maleficent, and a very, very large and unsightly Ursula head, not a costume character, are seen kind of like doing magic, trying to fight Mickey. And then there's this full show stop where then they explode into big inflatables out of each of the parade floats. And Ursula too, uh, her giant head just goes up a little bit on a pole and uh, there's big body inflates underneath her, but it's cool. It's so cool. What ended up happening to this giant head? Is this the head that's at the Art of Animation studio right now? Oh my God, is it? No, it's not it. I didn't Google it, but I'm just assuming it's not it. Kenny, can you check? Kenny says it's not it, okay. <laughs> this, this is another one of those things do not take a picture of it. Nighttime parades in Ursula do not equal good flash photography, all right? Speaking of giant inflatable Ursulas, here's an important time for me to say to you that yes, uh, Ursula has made many Disney on Ice appearances, but um, be honest with you, I didn't get all the souvenir booklets in time. And when I started to dive in deeper into them, I realized that uh, we're gonna need to make a whole video just about Ursula on ice because uh, boy, it's a menace. She's a real menace. Get right now, go to Disney on ice right now, scroll down a little bit and look at one of the main featured images on their website. It is uh, one of the most cursed Ursula images you might ever see. We have to do a whole separate video about Disney on ice Ursula's. It's one of the first times that I'm gonna have to separate out Disney on ice because it's just so, it's just so, it's just so great. In 2001, we saw a brand new parade, Celebrate a Dream Come True Parade at Walt Disney World, and it featured an iconic villain's float. 
Now this villain's float has been reused time and time and time and time again. This is a very popular float. They put a lot of money into it, clearly. And on the back end of it is a built-in Ursula. It looks a little bit cauldrony, like, like her like her lair. And plopped right on top of it are these big fabric tentacles that kind of wrap around the entire end of the unit. And that is actually just a body cavity for a cast member to then just slip themselves into and perform from the inside. Now here's an interesting thing about this Ursula head. It's gigantic, it's gaudy, and it looks like a troll doll. And <laughs> I really, this Ursula head is like, uh, questionable. It's a little bit reminiscent of the first Ursula head that we saw back in that character parade in 1988, but now they put this gigantic beehive like hairdo on top of her. Like, uh, honey, I don't think so. Did she put her finger in an electrical socket? Was there, is there lightning? It's just Disney World. I don't know why is Ursula's hair standing up like that. She's a sea witch, not a troll doll. But every once in a while, and I don't know why, I don't know why, maybe a cast member vomited in it or something, I don't know. There are definitely photos out there of like not so scary parades where the Ursula has a um, has the spectral magic head on. It looks bad. We don't really focus a lot on this channel, but it happens all the time where little costume tweaks, and this is a little, this is a major one, kind of uh, derail the entire look of the costume. Here's where Ursula really works. In 2005, the Parade of Dreams parade, right? Anyway, uh, <laughs> in the Parade of Dreams parade, we got one of Ursula's most iconic looks. This is a really, really cool parade float. Ursula is free floating inside of a coral ring that elevates her above the base of this kind of uh, spooky uh, cave-like floor in front of her big steamy cauldron. And if that's not enough, she's articulated. She's this articulated, gigantic, floating Ursula Wow, this is cool. This is on a really sharp look. I really, really love this parade float. In 2005, over at Disneyland Paris, they yanked out one of their existing aerial floats from one of their main daytime parades uh, to do up this Halloween parade. And, and in that, they took this aerial float with a gigantic Ursula on the bottom of it, by the way. This big Ursula head just comes rocking out of the front of it. It's kind of, it's kind of weird. And uh, there's really no good angle to see the Ursula head unless you're like above it. But again, there is one good view to see this Ursula and it's that gigantic clamshell all the way at the top. And for the Halloween parade, they decided to double Ursula this float and put in some kind of, I don't know, Dune Spice Overlord? My God, this Ursula looks like Dave Bautista does all of its bidding. <laughs> I love the fact that we have this big, huge, bulky Ursula high above us on this gigantic clamshell kind of rolling around. And let's not forget this black velour rhinestone. Like, are you kidding me? I mean, work, Ursula, work. Going back to those animatronic Ursula slapped on the back of parade floats, in 2007 over in Disneyland Paris, we had the Once Upon a Dream Parade, and uh, it featured a huge iconic villain's float, just like over in America, and on the back of it is this gigantic, and I mean, this is a huge Ursula. Photos don't necessarily get do justice to how large this animatronic is. This is nearly the size of the Phantasmic Ursula all the way back in 1991. This is a gigantic animatronic Ursula. It looks like a costume, but no. And it has it has some articulation. And eventually, uh, as this parade float kind of gets reused over and over again, the articulation has really, really gone downhill. This float's being used in Disneyland Paris's Halloween parades. Now, you know, whenever they need a villain moment, this parade float is always there. 2010, Disneyland Paris once again rolls out a new Ursula look for the nighttime show. Hold on, let me get this right. Mickey and his magic Halloween night. Uh, we have this live actress Ursula with these big puppet floatsam and jetsams, which are kind of cool. But this Ursula, again, black light Ursula, big bold lips, whatever this wig is, whatever, th this is, this is, this is a look. This is a look. This costume looks very similar to that original costume we saw on the Halloween parade float a couple uh, versions back up on that clamshell, but they have done up her makeup and wig in a way that just makes her pop from the audience that is uh, sabuki. Disney Tokyo Sea has a lot of fun with that big gigantic ocean they have in the middle of the park. A little bit like Animal Kingdom's doing right now with characters on boats, but Tokyo Sea really leans into it. We've had a lot of these festivals and the villains had one. In fact, in 2015, the villains world featured a lot of boats out on the water. 
Ursula gets a new look in this that I really kind of like. The head sculpt on this is really cool and I love the wig styling. This feels very cartoony. This feels like something that they took a lot of time and effort at to really refine to the perfect shape. There's almost this figure eightness of the head sculpt between the big jaws and the gigantic hair that really gives it a great silhouette and a lot of really nice layering. I, I really love this Ursula costume, except for the neck down, where it really starts to fall apart and it's just a little frumpy. It's just a, it's just a frumpy basic uh, Ursula fabric-y kind of costume. I mean, very similar to the first Ursula costume, just with a, a revised head. The bottom half of this costume doesn't have to work. And you know why? Because of this. Look at this reveal. When she first appears on her boat, boom, 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 boom. She's blowing tentacles left and right out of this thing. What are this, Pirates of the Caribbean? What are we loading up cannons with tentacles? This is, this is a really cool reveal. I love this. She's looking really cool. Remember back in 2011 when they were doing that Little Mermaid ride and the Imagineers finally finished the Ursula animatronic and they made this whole big video special about moving her into place and programming her? Boy, that was, I wasn't even prepared with that little special at how magnificent this Ursula animatronic would be inside of this attraction. It is gorgeous, it is gigantic, and it is this one big amorphous kind of piece of silicone with a lot of squash and bounce, just like the character has in the original animated movie, man, they brought Ursula to life in this ride. Unlike I've, you, you've seen Ursula anywhere else in the parks. And I mean, I mean, seriously, this Ursula is gorgeous until her head falls off. It's terrifying. Imagine being the kid who watched it fall off. Not just the kid who passed by and saw it dangling there, kind of still talking. Imagine the kid who watched it roll. Decades of therapy, decades of therapy. <laughs> 2016 Disneyland's Frightfully Fun Parade has a lot of fun with Ursula. This is one of my absolute favorite Ursula looks throughout all of them. We go back to that kind of spectrum magic energy where she's on this uh, uh, free moving Roomba kind of, you know, I, I don't know, Matt hoverboard kind of energy. I don't know if the cast member inside these things has control. You know what, if you're a parade cast member, if you've ever been in a costume character, reach out to me, leave a comment here, hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Patreon, any of those places. I want to hear from you. I want to hear the stories of the people inside these costumes because I want to know how some of them work because uh, this is beautiful. This is really beautiful. Ursula's kind of roaming around with her glowing contract, which I'm all about, uh, kind of taunting the crowd. Uh, and the headpiece, the headpiece on this costume is kind of fun. It's not overly obnoxious. It's not gigantic like all the previous Ursula headpieces. This is a very tight, form-fitting head. It's almost a mask in a way with this big, long jowl that kind of hangs over. This big long, you know, again, that dude, it's a, Ursula's got a lot of Dune villain energy. I don't know. Will we see the second one? Skellen Skarsgård? Who's making the Dune? It's been greenlit. I know it's been greenlit. I just want it now because I'm impatient and an American and I'm entitled to entertainment. Oh, just like most of you Disney fans. Don't put that in the video. Uh, <laughs> or do. I don't care. <laughs> Doing a little bit of an alternate take on the Ursula Parade Float standalone unit thing, over in 2017, the Villains Night Out at Hong Kong Disneyland, and actually eventually it made its way into Shanghai Disneyland, and, and then even eventually to Walt Disney World, is this really cool kind of subnautical, a little bit of like 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, topped with this big ornate Ursula costume, which is absolutely gorgeous. This is a really cool float. I um I love it. I love I love the steampunky nautical theme of this and so I love that kind of that blend of energy and this is really stunning and of and again no costumed headpiece here this is another live face actress now we kept working we kept working on the live actress Ursula with articulated tentacles. We kept trying to figure it out. And you know what? In 2019, the new Halloween show over in Disneyland Paris uh, got pretty darn close. I really, really like this Ursula. The show, of course, is called It's Good To Be Bad Villain Show, and Ursula sings the Are You Brave Enough song. And uh, if you take a really close look at this, we have a lot of body paint. She's wearing a, uh, a, a kind of a lycra body suit to give the purple arms, the purple gloves. And then she's got this really beautiful face paint and this really great wig. Uh, and of course, that, that conch shell necklace. But then let's look at the tentacles themselves, because the entire show has this large shell on the middle of the stage that, of course, is just 
a, a one trick pony being Ursula because these tentacles don't move. They're attached into that rock. She's not controlling them. That's all That's all built in. And uh, But as she sings all those beats and is choreographed up top, she lands with all those tentacles and really makes some, some cool looks, some cool moments, some nice tableaus. Now, I hope you're all buckled in for this last Ursula look. And uh, if you weren't a fan of The Greatest Showman, uh, leave now because Hong Kong Disneyland in 2019 decided to do this whole villains greatest showman mashup. I mean, like literally they have all the beats. They've got the top hat guy. They've got like a big tall guy. It's just like, whoa, ladies and gents, this is the moment you waited for. It's so greatest showman. That said, look at this Ursula that's dancing around in this in the background of this. I am obsessed with this Ursula energy. Now, she's wearing a bodice with eight tentacles, plus her two arms would give her 10 tentacles, but we're not, let's not, we're just splitting hairs at this point because this costume's magic doesn't shine until it's time for Ursula's number, all right? The stage clears and you see the small crowd wander into the middle of the stage. And suddenly those eight dancers move out to reveal this huge parachute screen that the entire stage suddenly is projection mapped onto with her tentacles and water effects. Wow, this knocks it out of the park. This is like seeing uh, uh, the f Happily Ever After Enchanted, but like in front of your eyes up close. But this is really cool and still has a lot of fun, unique ways that they play with her tentacles always moving and uh, and the cast kind of moving around. I, I'm really obsessed with this. I love it. This is one of the sharpest, most technically advanced Ursula looks we get in the parks. They have a lot of fun with Ursula in this show. All the other costume villains just look like they're costume villain selves, you know, with some circus dancers around them. But this is really like the main attraction almost of the costumes of the villains. Across the board, we take a lot of risks with Ursula's costumes, and sometimes they pay off, and sometimes they're truly horrific. But at the end of the day, that's Ursula. She's never been this beautiful, perfect little uh, villain or hero or anyone to translate into a costume character. She's a big, angry, power-hungry, inky, squiddy, sea witchy, cave dwelling monster, all right? And uh, when you put that, <laughs> when you translate that into real life, uh, it's not always gonna work. Now remember, these Ursula looks are just the theme park looks. There is a cornucopia of other Ursula looks out there that just, we didn't have enough time to talk about it. So stay tuned because there's gonna be a lot more Ursula content on its way. And once again, this video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Get all of their information in the link in the description. Leave me a comment below and let me know which of these Ursula costumes slammed and which some of them sunk. Uh, let me know if you got to meet Ursula or have any good photos of Ursula out there in the social media. Share them with me, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Patreon. I love hearing from you. I love all your comments. Thanks for watching, ringing those bells, subscribing, liking, everything you do. It really means, honestly, the world to me. I love you all, you guys. Thanks for watching. You rock. Beluga, Saruga, come winds of the Caspian Sea! Larynx, glochitis, et mass laryngitis, la volcay to me! I just want you guys to know at home that I have no scripts for these. All of this just comes out of my head. I want you all to know that. I don't know if anyone does know that, but that's the truth. That's why some of these are hit and miss, baby. I don't know what you want me to tell you. <laughs>